Hi there future PEs, this is Vasim Asghar. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the US and Canada and I've authored several books on the topic of FE Electrical and PE Power. I also run popular programs for FE Electrical and PE Power exam preparation. In this video, I'm gonna be doing a strategic overview of National Electric Code, which is a topic within general power engineering codes and standards. NEC is a heavy hitter on the PE Power exam and you cannot go wrong by diving deep into NEC. Having said that, please remember that it is a 800 plus page standard. And if you don't take a proper approach towards learning NEC within the context of P-Power exam, you can get overwhelmed quite easily. In this video, you're gonna see me breaking down NEC into small digestible chunks. I'll be providing specific recommendations for different topics within NEC and how you can work on those areas in an effective manner. I've helped tons of students with zero background in National Electrical Code, and a lot of these students are either internationally trained engineers, new graduate students with little to no experience in the field, and even engineers who have zero background in electrical engineering, such as mechanical engineers, civil engineers, who are pivoting into power systems industry. And one of the common feedback that I get from students after they go through my program and pass the exam on the first attempt is that passing the exam obviously is a primary goal, main objective. By going through the program and understanding the concepts from first principles based approach, problem based learning approach, they are able to feel more confident and competent as power systems engineers. If you're new to this channel, then please consider subscribing to this channel. In order to stay up to date with weekly content on FE Electrical and P Power exam preparation, as well as general electrical engineering tips and tricks. So without further ado, let's start our strategic review of NEC. So this is, again, let's step back a little bit and look at NEC strategically, okay? So when you look at NEC, the first thing that in the context of the P-Power exam, you must appreciate and recognize is that NEC it has the lion's share within codes and standards. If you don't want to take my word for it, check out the P-Power sample exam from NCES, right? 80% of the questions over there are from NEC, right? Granted, there is also NFP 70E, NESC, NFP 497, 99, and 30B, right? But even from a practical standpoint, as I was mentioning earlier, if you are a practicing engineer, as working as a design engineer, working as a technical engineer, as a power systems engineer, in majority of the cases, you're gonna be referring to NEC more than any other code, unless you work in transmission distribution where NESC kicks in a little bit more, okay? a lot more, but for all practical purposes, NEC is the go-to standard, right? So if you find yourself spending a lot of time within my program in the on-demand course and the live training and the homework assignments working through NEC, that is by design. Within the on-demand course, we have streamlined eight to nine lectures on NEC. In the live training, on average, I do a three to four hour session on a Saturday and a three to four hour session on a Sunday on NEC. We have tons of practice problems in the form of in-lecture practice problems, quizzes, mini exams, homework assignments, okay? You have ample opportunity to basically work on NEC even if you're starting from scratch, okay? It is important to keep in mind the layout of NEC. There are nine chapters, okay, nine chapters. Chapters one to four are considered general, but they are arguably the most important, okay? <clears throat> and they're applicable to practically all the electrical installations. Now, within the eight to 10 part lecture series that I have in the on-demand, about 90% of the discussion happens within these chapters. Whether you're talking about conductors, whether you're talking about motors, whether you're talking about grounding, OCPDs, transformers, and uh, working spaces, okay? <clears throat> Anything and everything that we discuss for the most part is in chapters one, two, four. Chapter number five is hazard, hazardous area classification, um, which for which we also have these specialized um, codes, 497, NFPA 49930B, but chapter five still 
serves as a really good foundation even to understand those smaller codes, specialized codes, right? Then we have six and seven dealing with special occupancies, uh, special equipment conditions, right? Chapter six is interesting in a sense that it has a lot of very small targeted topics like elevators, like PV systems, right? Uh, swimming pools, if I'm not mistaken, amusement parks, uh, EV chargers. And um, um, those are very easy to read uh, short articles, right? That are found in chapter number six. Strongly recommend going through that. Chapter number eight applies to communication systems. Chapter number nine contains tables, some of which we have to cross-reference when we are going through chapters one to four, and even I believe in chapter number six, okay? So this is a 30,000 view of NEC. The important thing to remember with NEC is that you have to be comfortable dealing with cross-referencing. You are gonna be bounced around like a ping pong ball, okay? Between different tables, between different code rules, and I make a conscious effort in the program to um, help you get used to it, right? The questions that I design in the homework assignments, the quizzes, the mini exams, computer simulated practice exam, they are not one line questions where you just go ahead and extract this and then you're done. You have to sort of make use of a lot of moving pieces and puzzles, right? Articles, there are over 140 articles, but I think that of these 140 40 articles, roughly 10% of them or even less than that are the ones that are repeatedly used, right? We know some of these articles by heart. I'm gonna actually mention some of them on the next slide. Um, article for motor, transformers, OCPDs, grounding, surge arresters, and so on, okay? So make sure that the core fundamental articles, right? And if article is very large, it actually has multiple parts, right? Um, so you have to spend some extra time in these articles, right? As a practicing engineer, as a consulting engineer, when I was doing engineering design, I used to spend so much time in the opacity tables in article 450, article 430, and so on, okay? So you have to take um, um, multiple, multi-pronged approach. Obviously, you're doing the learning in order to pass the exam, but also look at it as a, as a byproduct, you're also getting, uh, sharpening, you know, your understanding of codes and standards. So this is a 30,000 foot view of things. Now, within the on-demand course, as you guys know, I put together this spreadsheet, which is downloadable, which contains a comprehensive list of all the rules, tables, articles, exceptions, notes, right? It references everything, right? Uh, it has multiple tabs. So please make sure you download that after going through the content. I mean, I presented right up front so you can make use of it as you're progressing along it. Um, but it is serving as a really good resource for students in the final couple of weeks of their exam, okay? Because they can quickly eyeball it and maybe go to those relevant code sections and uh, it helps them sort of consolidate their knowledge, right? If we go through some of the big topics very quickly that we reviewed in the course, right? In the on-demand live training and discussions, the first one, and this is not in a particular order, is conductors. So conductors, your go-to article is 310 plus other requirements elsewhere. So 310, 15, B16, you guys know that that is the opacity table, that is a big one. Overcan protection, so Majority of the discussion happens in 240, and one of the famous tables in 240 is 240.6, as we were discussing earlier, standard ratings of the devices, OCPDs, right? But there's a bunch of other discussion that is very specific to motors, very specific to transformers, and then when you go into, um, you know, uh, chapter number six, uh, there'll be additional specific discussion related to some of the other topics, right? Grounding, article 250 is your go-to. In the live training, we went through grounding, different terminology and whatnot, right? And then grounding requirements can then be spe found specially for transformers, motors, and other equipment. Working space, article 110 deals with it, right? What is a minimum clearance that is required based on the voltage and the type of the electrical equipment, whether it is grounded or not, what is in front of it, what is behind it, vertical clearance and everything. 
Uh, and then there can be some other specific requirements for different sections, but article 110 is where most of the action is. Then you have hazardous area classification, as I was mentioning, chapter number five deals with it. And then in addition to that, we have NFPA 497, we have 499 and 30B. And next week, we are gonna be discussing these topics. Uh, my recommendation, as I'm gonna mention shortly, is to make sure that you actually read through 497, 499 and 30B cover to cover. These are 40, 50, 60, 70 pages um, of code uh, content, and it is very easy to digest, okay? Motors, most of the action is in 430. In fact, when you go to motors right up front in the scope, um, they actually have a very interesting illustration that tells you that what are the other specific types of motors for which you need to refer to within the NEC, okay? So there's a lot of other cross-referencing, but primarily it is in 430. Similarly, transformer, which is the heart and soul of power systems, you have article 450, plus some additional requirements elsewhere. Raceways uh, and junction boxes, these are interesting calculations. We've done a few of them in the program, right? And the quizzes, the homework assignment, detailed discussions, um, primarily relies on chapter number nine tables, okay? And then there can be a lot of miscellaneous small stuff. So by the time you go through all of these topics in a structured, organized manner, in depth and detail, if there's something that is thrown at you as a curveball, right? Um, and if it is a new topic, chances are that it is gonna be a very special term. And then you can rely on your keyword finding skills, right? And control F and you can basically work through um, the content accordingly. Does it make sense? Uh, it still means that you have to have a basic level of understanding of NEC, but after you've gone through all of this, I suspect that if anything else comes up, you should be fairly well equipped to deal with it head on, okay? So this is how we approach NEC. On average, what is the number that I've given you guys in terms of number of hours that you have to put in or on average, what students put in NEC, especially if they have a beginner level of understanding? About 40 hours. If you have little to no background in NEC, then it, and if you see yourself putting in 40 hours of study time, that is actually proportional to the amount of, to the weightage of NEC on the exam, right? Because if we assume that about 10%, which is still on the lower end of the exam is gonna be NEC. And if you consider the P power exam preparation as a roughly 400 hour project, right? 10% of 400 is 40 hours, right? So you're not going too deep in it or you're not overwhelming yourself or you're not doing something that is out of ordinary, okay? That is in line with the level of effort that you will have to put in, especially if you have an intermediate, if you have a beginner level uh, starting point. If you're already an expert, I have had students in my program who were master electricians. They knew a lot more about NEC than I knew, right? Um, that's a unique scenario. Uh, you can potentially then breeze through NEC and put your time and effort on some of the more abstract and challenging topics that are applicable to you based on your scenario, okay? All right, that's the summary. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, otherwise we're done with NEC. If you like this video, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section of this video below. You can find tons of success stories of my FE Electrical and P Power students over here. And if you want to learn more about preparation of FE Electrical and Computer Exam and the P Power Exam, then check out these playlists over here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next video.